The world has, has got so many lonely people. A lot of people have been hurt in friendships and so they close down. But God's plan for you and for me is that we'll have good friends, good relationships. That we will enjoy the support of people who will love us, who will support us, who will be there for us, who will always speak the truth to us, who will love us and who will value having a relationship with us and we with them and we with other people too. This bite-sized truth about good relationships helps us to know a way in which we can find the strength and the security and the wisdom and the, and the principles of, of having really good friends around us. This bite-sized talk focuses on the value of good relationships. We'll deal with marriage relationships and that sort of thing in another talk, but today I want to see what the Bible says about friends and friendship, that sort of relationship. The people we choose to hang out with, the people we listen to, and the people that we put our trust in to have an input into our lives. If that's good, it's good. If it isn't, then it really isn't. I'll also, we'll have a little look at the sort of friend that we also need to be to others. Friendship plays such an important part in our lives, doesn't it? A young child going to school for the first time. Uh, the big thing is, did they make friends today? Because if they did, they'll go back to school tomorrow. If they didn't, well, who knows? Friendships get a bit trickier during the teenage years, especially if a student then decides they're going to leave home, leave home church, go and live in a strange university city where they know no one. Who they make friends with will either be helpful or dangerous. Some so-called friends will then try and lead people to go astray. They get drunk, they experiment with drugs, or they engage in sexual promiscuity. The need for friendship doesn't go away after college, or after marriage, or after having had children, or after the family leaves home and you become an empty nester and you realize that actually you wake up one morning and say, we've got no real friends because most of the relationships that you built revolved around children and education and school and work, maybe. Lack of relationships produces loneliness. And loneliness is a very, very difficult place to be. Lonely people sit at home watching TV. They might have hundreds of friends on Facebook, but they never meet up with anyone. Loneliness brings unhappiness. It makes people vulnerable. It causes an unproductive and an unhappy life because people cave in on the inside of themselves. They, they draw the, the curtains, they put up the shutters, they close the door and say, uh, gone away. Their life revolves around going to work, coming home, they go to bed, they go to work and they repeat the process without any fun without any support, without the balance and the stimulus that good friends will bring to your life. I think you get the idea that good relationships, good friendships are a very important part of our lives. Now let's look at some key verses. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 8 to 10 it says, There was a man all alone. <laughs> he had neither a son nor a brother. There was no end to his toil. It was drudgery. We've just described that, haven't we? And then the verses carry on to say, two are better than one. So if one falls down, his friend, friend, can pick him up again. But pity the man who falls and has no one, no friend to help him up. It's a interesting verse about the need for, I love this little phrase, Two are better than one, and, and we all need somebody. The need of needing somebody in our lives. Of course, our, our greatest friendship is always going to be with Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit who is with us and God our Father. But God intended for us to be fellowshipping, to have relationships, to have good friends around us so that when we do need somebody, that they will help us. Oh, and by the way, that we can also be the person that helps somebody else up as well. The second 
key verse is this out of Proverbs 27 17 it says as iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another so if you've got a sharpener going on here like this but you take one of those away and you end up alone who's going to sharpen you and who are you going to sharpen the need for friendship, the need for relationship is important because it's only when the when you come together as iron sharpens iron, then that's the time when you get sharpened. That's the time when you receive and you are able to give. But on your own, you become very vulnerable. We're asking the question in every one of these short talks, what would Jesus do? You know, what? how, how did this issue, how did this thing about friendship um, connect with or, or change affect Jesus well in Mark chapter 3 verse 14 it says this he that is Jesus he appointed 12 he designated them to apostles that they, they might be with him and that he then would send them out to preach Jesus collected a group of friends we call them the disciples or the apostles but actually they were friends those 12 were with him uh, they were there not only to learn as disciples, uh, I believe they had three incredible years of friendship with Jesus and friendship with one another. They must have laughed. Surely they teased and even annoyed each other. They vied for position to be favorite and to be noticed by Jesus and to sit close to him. There's Bible verses about that, but they were friends and Jesus acknowledged that bunch of people as his friends. In John chapter 14, verse 14 and 15, it says, Greater love hath no man than this, than he lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends, he says, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. That's a special relationship. Jesus' relationship, by the way, with all of those friends we're not all perfect. One betrayed him, one doubted him, and another denied him. Be, beyond those guys that were with him all day, every day, Jesus had others, many others, really, who he called friends that he loved, he trusted, and were important in his life. For example, in John 11, verse 5, it says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. It's uh, in intriguing to me to see how Jesus had those levels of friendships even amongst the disciples there was Peter James and John who, who were like you know part of like an inner circle they were his friends and and then Jesus told us the standard for relationship this is what we can learn from Jesus in John 15 12 he says love each other as I have loved you and that's the plan that's what God wants to happen for you that we will love one another that we will love friends and that we'll do it with the way that he loved us so now let's finally look at this last section which what steps can I choose to grow the right relationships and friendships in my life what what can I do now three things number one look for faithful and true people choose carefully choose your friends carefully never choose a gossip Remember that if somebody will tell you about somebody else, they'll tell somebody else about you. Be careful who you choose. Faithful and true people. Look for people who will love you. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend, a true friend, loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Don't be impressed by somebody's image. Look for somebody who's got a genuine heart. I mean, the Bible says again in Proverbs 22, 24, Don't, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with one who is easily angered. So there's a don't, don't have friends like that. Look for true and faithful ones. Number two, look for people who will be honest with you and have your best interest in their heart. Proverbs 27 verse 6 says, wounds from a friend can be trusted. You know, when they say something to you, it's a bit like, ouch, but that wound is okay because you can trust them. That sort of friend will be generous to you with his words with their time, even their money. They will be there to help you. They'll rejoice with you when you succeed and cry with you when you struggle and will support you through, through tough times. That sort of a friend, the friend who's honest, the friend who has your best interests, uh, they'll be there for you. And thirdly, look for people who will wisely lift you up when you fall and will enjoy spending time with you, whatever it is that's happening in your life. 
The Bible says, Proverbs 13, 20, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools, people who have fools as their friends, will suffer harm. We need wise people around us, wise people to help us through, to bring a little word, sometimes no word, just a hug sometimes. A true friend wants to share life with you. They want to share, they want a fellowship with you, they want to support you, they want to be there to bring you through and help you to come through. That's the reality. It's not about the friend, it's about you. Friendship. Then, and then you go and help somebody else as well. It's a two-way street. Choosing good friends is important. Don't hang around with people who will lead you astray or who are ungodly. And then out of their ungodliness, they will try and share with you their thoughts about what you should do. Have, have, have nothing to do with that. You, you're not going to learn something. You need to learn something from somebody who is godly. Don't be influenced by ungodly friends who've got ungodly standards and all the rest of it. They've got a lot to say, but let's come back to wise people. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 26, a righteous man is cautious in friendship. What a friend we have in Jesus. But also what a friend we need to look to, to, to develop with one another. A marker of being a friend of Jesus is being a good friend to others. Why don't you decide today that you're going to become a great friend and that you're going to have great friends, that you're going to lift up people and you're going to let people lift up you, that you're going to get, get, get be in a place where it's not all about you and self-pity, but you're actually going to become a great friend to somebody and then let somebody become a great friend to you together. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed in your faith, in your heart of hearts that you know Two people walking together, knowing God, loving God, knowing his will, helping one another. Now that's what I call a good relationship.